an example is, you know, and this is someone who is in the um, obesity medicine space. There was a 60 Minutes interview. I'm sure people are aware of this. And the obesity medicine physician there said that it doesn't matter if you diet, it doesn't matter if you exercise, if you have obesity, it's like 100% genetic. All right, so I guess we're gonna start with, you know, you have your credentials, you're a, a DO, and you also have a master's in public health. So public health is something that, you know, at Gillette Health, we think is very important. And there's a lot of like, positive messaging, positive work that's been done in the public health field. And there's a lot of contrarians out there that I, I think they really believe what they're saying. Uh, I don't think they're trying to harm people, um, but I think there's actually some harm being done there. So whenever you have these contrarians, you know, whether it comes down to like people that are anti-medication, you know, there's specific medications like statins that seem to get a lot of attention um, or people who are in the um, obesity space and you know, they're anti-medication there. And I guess I could argue the point that in the traditional model, there's people in the obesity medicine space that are pro-medication for everybody, which I think is also not, not the solution. Um, but an example is, you know, and this is someone who is in the um, obesity medicine space. There was a 60 Minutes interview. I'm sure people are aware of this. And the obesity medicine physician there said that it doesn't matter if you diet, it doesn't matter if you exercise, if you have obesity, it's like 100% genetic. It was sort of the gist of it. I don't know if that's actually quoting, but I'm sort of paraphrasing what the perception of that interview was. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have people that are saying, well, you know, statin medications are only going to cause side effects. You're not actually going to live any longer. If you do, it might be four days longer in the grand scheme of things. So I think both of these extremes, like these opinions of public health are causing harm. You know, I guess, what are some of your thoughts there, some examples that you see, um, given, you know, your master's in public health and interest in the space from like a systems level? Yeah, well, I think public health is a, the degree in public health is essentially a degree in statistics. And statistics is a great way of, of looking at data and understanding how it applies. Um, but one of the issues with that is that in the literature that's published, there's always going to be literature that you can cherry pick and choose specific studies to back up your, your uh, confirmation bias. And so public health is really about identifying where the majority of the literature points to. So the majority of the literature points to that exercise and diet are extremely important for obesity and should be the number one um, intervention for that. And there's some studies that show that it is genetic, but the majority of the studies sh move in this other way. And so public health focuses on the majority of the evidence, and that is that you should be addressing lifestyle changes first. Yeah, and it's almost like they're trying to make the you sort of run-of-the-mill metabolic syndrome where you have 70% of the people in the population who are, you know, overweight or obese at this point. They're trying to basically make that like a M4CR, uh, melanocortin receptor um, genetic mutation where these people have like pathologic hunger and hyperphagia where they just eat and eat and eat. And, you know, very often these people in childhood and early adulthood are having BMIs of like 40 and 50. And I, you can't really make an equivalency there. Um, and also when you look at exercise, even if someone is not losing weight, um, you know, you, you can't really just focus on the BMI as the like end all be all, because even if someone is exercising and not losing weight, their health is going to improve. Um, and then like, to your point about people who are going to cherry pick studies that show no benefit from a health intervention, you know, there are studies where it's like, yep, it looks like diets don't work because people regain the weight. But then you look at like, what do some of those people do that do keep off the weight? And, and what are some of those public health interventions that we should be putting out the message on. It's just like, I don't think it's gonna be solved in a very short time frame. just like smoking, which we chatted about a bit previously. You know, it took a lot of work to sort of undo the reassurance people received about like smoking. Like, you know, smoking is, it's fine. We, we can't find a link between smoking and lung cancer. And then obviously we feel kind of silly looking back at that now, but I think it's gonna be the same way with, you know, the environmental things that contribute to obesity. So like the processed foods, um, you know, the green spaces, you know, people tend to be much healthier and lighter in Los Angeles because there's a lot of um, biking and running, you know, walking dogs, that sort of thing that I've seen there. So, I mean, if you look at that compared to, you know, something in like Alabama, right, where someone is in a rural area and they have no like 
green spaces, you know, that's one of the, I think the most, if not one of the most obese states, you know, it makes a big difference, like from a, like public health standpoint, what resources, um, you know, local government, state government is going to allocate towards trying to get those people healthier. Absolutely. Yeah. The epidemiology of obesity is really fascinating. Looking at a map uh, by state of obesity, it's pretty significant with uh, lower rates of obesity being on the coasts and Colorado, interestingly, because there's so much outdoor activity to do and uh, being really high, uh, high in the south and in some places in the Midwest. Mm -hmm.